73 crowd could move it up and down the field for the season scoring 477 points averaging 480 yards per game a season in which they even scored 42 points against Tennessee and gained more than 500 yards with number one in their possession from the UPI coaches poll Bama headed for the Sugar Bowl to meet Notre Dame the Irish also unbeaten 10 and 0 and ranked third in the national poll. It was a college football game for the ages. The coaching matchup was as good as advertised between Paul Bryant and Eric Parsegian. So was the quality of the team. Which came before the bowl games, the number of national championships hanging at the capstone now numbered nine. 1977 had a double edge for Alabama. New Year's Day, they demolished Ohio State in the Sugar Bowl 35 to six. But Notre Dame beat top-ranked Texas in the Cotton Bowl and jumped all the way from fifth to first. And by now, the Alabama football faithful were getting weary of being plundered by Notre Dame. But that's the way it was in the game of opinion. The Tide played a killer schedule in 78, opening with wins over Nebraska and Missouri. Then Southern California came to Legion Field with Charles White flying all over the place and lefty Paul McDonald throwing darts plus Alabama's six turnovers. Not a pleasant evening for the home team. 24-14, the Trojans won. And the old balloon looked kinda limp. But a win over Washington in Seattle, close as it was, 20 to 17, helped get some air back in it, and then good things started happening. November 11, LSU, a ranked tough team, came to Legion Field, and a hard game was cracked open in the fourth quarter. The final was 31 to 10. And news came that Nebraska had knocked off top-ranked Oklahoma. Next, Auburn did Alabama a huge favor, if you can believe it. The Tigers played heavily favored Georgia to a 22-22 tie. And suddenly, the Crimson Tide had control of its own destiny beat Auburn and play for another national championship. And they did just that. Again, a matchup of Hall of Fame coaches, Paul Bryant and Joe Paterno. Penn State ranked number one, Alabama number two. It was a matchup of the highest quality, a game that actually transcended the hype. Alabama got the lead after a quarter and a half of sparring when Tony Nathan broke loose for 55 yards. Jeff Rutledge then hit Bruce Bolton from 30 yards out. Point good, Bama, 7-0. After the first half, it certainly looked as if defense would dictate the outcome. Lions quarterback Chuck Fusina finally found a crack in the third quarter, throwing 17 yards to Scott Fitzke, and the game was tied at 7. Then Lou Eichner fielded a state punt and hauled it back to the Nittany Lions' 10-yard line. Out of the wishbone, Rutledge pitched to Major Ogilvy, who banged into the end zone, and the Tide had the lead 14-7. But the drama was actually just beginning. In the final period, Penn State recovers an Alabama fumble at the 19-yard line. Move the ball to a first and goal at the Bama 8-yard line. One of the biggest plays of the game may well have been this one, where Don McNeil stopped Scott Fitzke just one yard from the goal line. Then came the two tries by the big backs. Matt Suey first. And then Mike Gooman. Sort of really tops it all off when you sit there and you, know, you win it 14 to seven and preserve the win. And, um, it was really something. And you know, a lot of people don't realize a lot of things that happened in that goal line stand, but you take like people like Mike Clements and our Don McNeil, the play that Don made, but Mike Clements made a play that nobody's ever said anything about. When Gooman got ready to jump over the line of scrimmage on third and fourth down, where all the linebackers got all the credit, Mike Clements had him by the ankle and he couldn't jump. And it made it a lot easier for a lot of other people. And of course, our penetration by our front people was just unbelievable. But uh, it just goes in with one of the many great ones, you know, that it's been around here, and that's what really makes it, I reckon you say, what makes us sell tickets. National championship number 10. One of my all-time favorite games.
79, Alabama had won five in a row with ease when Tennessee came to Birmingham on the third Saturday in October. You would have thought the Tide had forgotten to tie their shoelaces or something before they could even hitch up their britches. They were behind 17 to nothing. Quarterback Jimmy Streeter was driving the big orange train that year, and he was having a hoot at Legion Field. Bama started settling some in the second period. Stedman Sheely had a 33-yard scoring strike, but at the half, Tennessee led 17 to 7. And you have to know that that kind of performance would rouse some memorable oratory from Paul William Bryant. Don Jacobs stepped in at quarterback in the second half, led the comeback, capped a 14-play drive that covered 80 yards, running the last 13 himself for the big touchdown. The defense shut down Jimmy Streeter in the second half, and the Tide won the ball game 27 to 17. There was another spot of quicksand in the 1979 schedule for Alabama, down in Louisiana's version of Death Valley. Coach Charlie McClendon loved to have company come under the lights in the city of the Red Stick. We tried hard to get Charlie Mack to change the game from night to day so it could be televised, but he would have none of it. He wanted to be one of the boys to beat the bear, and he almost did, losing only three to nothing. A downpour turned Tiger Stadium into a massive mud hole. It was fortunate nobody drowned, and Alabama was very, very fortunate to get out of Baton Rouge with a win. After whipping Miami 30 to nothing at Tuscaloosa, and that was the Miami team with Jim Kelly at quarterback, it was back down the road to Legion Field and that old minefield called Iron Bowl. The Auburn Tigers were a ranked team, eight and two, and on Iron Bowl day, spoiling for a fight. The Tide jumped to an early lead. Quarterback Stedman Sheely slicked them into the halftime, leading 14 to three, but there was trouble coming. The score rose to 17 to six, and then Alabama started dropping the ball. Four fumbles dramatically added to the excitement factor, and Doug Barfield's Tigers were cashing the Alabama mistakes to the point where Auburn led 18 to 17 with 11 and a half minutes to play. After another drop covered by Major Ogilvy, Stedman Sheely got the white shirts moving in the right direction. There was a terrific run by fullback Steve Whitman. And then the winning touchdown called by John Forney on the Alabama Radio Network. Wide side of the field is left. Looking out that way is Stedman Sheely. Sheely rides it in. Keeps himself. Goes to the left. Keeps the five. Two. Touchdown for Stedman Sheely. And Alabama regains the lead. But as the Crimson Tide headed back to the Sugar Bowl to play a very good Arkansas team, Ohio State was number one in the polls and Alabama number three. Lou Holtz, then coach of the Razorbacks, thought by many to be one of the best big game coaches around, watched the Alabama defense blunt every Arkansas try when it counted. And then under Stedman Sheely's leadership, the Alabama offense started to roll right along. Mal Moore, Bama offensive coordinator, details the shift in the offensive scheme which caused the Razorbacks so much grief. We felt that, uh, you know, that Arkansas played a very good scheme against the wishbone. They played against Texas, you know, year after year. And so we came with a double wing you know, with the backs to the tight inside in the wing position, the back of the split inside also in the wing position. But we ran the same offense, but we did it with a little bit of movement. But by going to that alignment, it, it put Arkansas in a, a little different scheme defensively. They had now, because uh, we had four quick receivers on the line of scrimmage and, 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 and I think it may have caught them off guard a little bit so they went normally would check back to a base type scheme of defense and put them in a different support uh, pattern and uh, we were had we had the advantage 24 to 9 was the final score Major Ogilvy had a whopping day was named MVP and had the time of his life especially since Ohio State had lost in the Rose Bowl to Southern California and so the 70s and the remarkable record of Alabama football teams during that decade ended on that New Year's Day at the Superdome. The next day, Alabama had the votes in the polls, finishing ahead of Southern California.